Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So a full on case study of a Shopify store which has crossed over $35,000 in sales with a five times return on ad spend. Now this is going to be a very special video because I'm actually making a video of a store which is not personally my store, but actually one of my students slash client store. Now I like to call my students clients because that's what they really are, but it's really a great thing to see whatever you're teaching go into action and actually bring results to other people besides yourself. This is one of the biggest issues a lot of people have and that is because of the amount of dropshippers out there who are teaching stuff but aren't doing it themselves or finding the results, it has become really hard to trust the right individual and I'm glad to say that this client right here was able to do over a five times ROAS over the lifetime of this ad account successfully using a lot of the strategies which I personally teach and which I personally use. So this is one video you're going to want to watch until the end if you want to achieve the same 5x ROAS and above. But let's just get right into it. First thing you'll have to do in order to find any type of success with this video, however, is to destroy that like button until it turns blue. Prom is not going to take more than two quick seconds. Okay, hopefully I've destroyed the like button down below, but a full on case study of this Shopify store right here. As you guys can see right now, we're looking at the last seven days. So far, the Shopify store has done over $5,200 with only about $1,000 in ad spend. Absolutely insane number. If we change this to the last 14 days, we can see that the ROAS was a bit lower, 4.30, but still nonetheless very profitable. As you guys can see within the last few days, it has really started to go up. There were a few things done which caused this ad account to go up during the last few days and if we change this to all time we can see that overall $35,700 in sales with $7,000 ad spend with a 5x ROAS. As you can see, this client started running ads towards the end of July and until now it has done 5x ROAS. So this kind of lets you know that Google is a time-based machine. The more time you give it, the more patient you are with it, the higher the ROAS. And if you follow the strategies taught on this YouTube channel, then this becomes very, very doable. But for those people that have been following me for a while, you know that I have offered a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring in the past. This client came through me for the one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Right now, I do have a Google Ads agency where I personally run your ads for you and help you achieve results just like these ones. So if you have a Shopify store that's doing about $50,000 in sales every single month, just go ahead and go on to my agency website, yorumarketing.com, or send me a message on Instagram to find out more about that. But exactly how was this store able to do 5X ROAS with $35,000 in sales? Let's start off by looking at all of the campaigns currently running. So as we can see, if we go ahead and change this to all, we can see all of the campaigns which have run on this ad account in the past. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the overall bids for this ad account. So during this time period, as you can see, the conversions were through the roof. This was actually because of a mistake with the conversion tracking. After that was fixed, it went back to normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the time period to kind of go over that so that it doesn't really count that time period. So August 8 and onwards, this was when the conversion was correct. As you can see, there are several different campaigns going on here, but the major ones include the general testing campaigns, which is this one right here and this one right here. So this ad account literally contains the same exact strategies, which I go over and over again on my YouTube channel and also in my Google Ads Mastery course. The link for that will be in the description below. But as you can see, for the overall overall ROAS for these two campaigns, it was well above a 4.0. So there was nothing really special going on with those two campaigns. This one right here at the bottom, was a low bid campaign, meaning the 10 cent bid, which I always recommend. And this one right here, if we go inside this actual campaign, look at the settings, we'll be able to see exactly what the bid was. Again, the bids and everything are very, very irrelevant. It's all about what kind of products you add, how you do the search engine optimization with the titles, descriptions, what kind of images you choose and so forth. Again, everything that I've been always talking about right now, this general testing campaign is currently on target row as percentage. Again, something I personally have been testing around as well, but this client actually just recently changed his ad account to target ROAS before it was actually fully on maximized clicks and the bid was actually around 0.60 Canadian dollars. So that was actually a bigger amount than what I would normally recommend, hence why the overall cost per purchase started to increase during the later portions of this campaign. If we go inside the product section, we'll be able to see exactly what started to happen. And looking at it daily, 
changing this to conversions, we'll be able to see that it was kind of inconsistent later on. And a lot of the times it was actually not profitable. And that's simply because when the bid is too high, that's exactly what ends up happening. Overall, the campaign performance was heavily changing. As you can see, if we change it to weekly, we'll be able to see exactly what the real numbers were. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change this to the last 30 days so that it loads up fully. And as you can see, the ROAS had started to dip heavily after September 20th. Again, once the bid is too high and with the changing seasons, changing product searches and so forth, the auctions are changed heavily because new competitors come in, old competitors start to leave the market. I mean, if it's a summer product, nobody's going to sell it in at the end of September or early October. So that causes a huge dip in the amount of competition available. And a lot of the times, if your bid is too high, the Google starts winning almost all of the auctions, even if it shouldn't. And that's what really causes the overall ROAS to go down. That's exactly what started to happen here because the bid was so high. But overall, this campaign performed really well. And look at the last 30 days, it had just started to dip. But again, changing this to all time, we can see that it was at 4.07. The low bid campaign, it's designed to just cover all of the lost sales, make sure that any product that works on a low bid gets shown in this campaign because a lot of the times products will actually not perform well with high bid campaigns. That's exactly why this low bid campaign is here for to kind of capture all of those lost sales, kind of like that big fishing net trying to ensure that even the small fishes get caught within. And that's exactly what this low bid campaign does right here. But here is the beauty about this. This client here started newer campaigns recently, which are also smart shopping campaigns, but these are not just any types of smart shopping campaigns. These are actually smart shopping campaigns based around a PAC. Now you may be wondering, what is a PAC? A PAC is a product ad group campaign, something I recently talked about in one of my previous videos. I'll leave the link for that video in the description below. But a PAC is basically a collection of products within one generic campaign, but this collection is not just a random collection of products. It could be the same niche within this campaign, or it could be the same profit margins. It has to be something similar to each other. That's exactly what this client did right here. They decided to start new smart shopping campaigns and base it around profit margins instead of the niches. As you can see, the results have been absolutely insane. This top one right here, performing the best as of currently with a 6.68 ROAS, spent so far 2,300 Canadian dollars to get back $15,000 in sales. And the beauty is the Smart Shopping campaign has the same exact settings, which I always teach on my YouTube channel, also in my Google Ads Mastery course. But this specific campaign was started more towards the end of August, and so far it has been absolutely insane. As you guys can see, a lot of higher ticket products getting sold within this campaign, $230, $300, and so forth. And the conversion value over cost, meaning the ROAS, has been absolutely insane. So this is the kind of results you get if you follow all of the things laid out within the Google Ads Mastery course or even just in my YouTube channel. But exactly why was this campaign so profitable? Again, this was because it was a product ad group campaign with similar profit margins. The more you help Google Ads, the more it will help you. So if you decide to just throw in a bunch of random products which have no correlation to each other, it can still work. However, Google is going to have a much harder time getting you the kind of results that you want, simply because the products are random. They don't really have any type of correlation to each other. On the other hand, if you make it based around a niche or based around profit margins, then it becomes 10 times easier for Google to go out and find the right kind of traffic. Now, keep in mind, you don't want to just start off with smart shopping gamuts with a brand new ad account. This ad account already had a lot of sales. As you can see, this campaign here was started towards the end of August, whereas the entire store was already running from July and getting data. So you need data for this to actually work. Once you have enough data, you can start with the generic options. As you can see, the target ROAS percentage, it was not even that high. It was 310% here, which is basically a 3.1 ROAS. However, Google, and this is the beauty about Google, just because you give it a three times ROAS, a 200% ROAS percentage, that doesn't mean Google is going to just stay around that. In fact, Google wants you to kind of continue doing business with them. So it will try to maximize your ROAS percentage. That's exactly what happened here. Even though the ROAS percentage was 3.1, the client was getting a ROAS on average of 6.68 over two times their desired ROAS percentage. And that's exactly how Google works. But you will have to help Google. You'll have to provide the right products, at least within the same niche or profit margins. But that is not the only smart shopping campaign that was crushing it within this ad account. This second campaign right here was also a smart shopping campaign. And this smart shopping campaign was no special at all. It was basically the same kind of smart shopping number one. What the client actually did is just kind of distribute the products from the entire store 
some in smart shopping campaign number one and the rest in smart shopping campaign number two to kind of evenly distribute the results and the results again were absolutely amazing again this one was started more towards early october but still amazing results so far different products getting sale and the beauty about smart shopping campaigns is you don't have to worry about setting a right bid because as you can see some products get bids at 21 cents other gets bids at 61 cents but in the end they still end up being profitable and that's simply because you're giving google the ability to go out and do what it desires the ability to find the right kind of audience for you and that is the most powerful thing you can do for google ads in order to find the results that you're looking for again going inside the settings we can see that this was a little bit of a higher target percentage but going back into the all campaign section we can see that this campaign actually has a lower ROAS compared to campaign number one, which had a lower target percentage. And that is just how Google works. It's kind of counterintuitive. The higher you percentage you set on Google's campaigns, the harder it is for Google to go out and find the right audience for you. So that's why you have to be a little bit more lenient when you're setting the target percentages, when you're setting the settings. Because if you're too strict, then Google is just going to have a lot of issues finding the right audience for you. So that's pretty much it for those two smart shopping campaigns. Moving on to these other campaigns right here. These are actually single product campaigns, also known as SPCs. Again, something I teach on my YouTube channel. As you can see, the first one right here had an overall ROAS of 5.92. The next one had a 3.21. And this one didn't do so great. And that's just how Google works. Not every product you try to scale will be scalable. In those cases, you want to just follow the other strategies, which I mentioned on my YouTube channel or in my Google Ads Mastery course. And that is to just scale them via the general testing campaigns or via the smart shopping campaigns if you decide to test your products with smart shopping. But just very generic ways of scaling. This product right here was already selling for this client within the general testing campaigns. And that is exactly why they decided to start a brand new campaign just based around that product. Unfortunately, it was a seasonal product, so it did start to die off. However, as you can see, the bidding was on manual CPC, with enhanced CPC, looking at the actual bids, it was running at around 0.40 CAD, so not very high at all. And this bid was again determined based on what the bid was within the general testing campaign. I like to just increase the bid by 0.01 to 0.05. And again, it works a lot of the times, but it also fails a lot of the times. It just depends on the product. Not every product is scalable via standalone campaigns. Looking at this one right here, more successful standalone campaign, and it's still running to this day. Again, manual CPC with enhanced CPC. CPC. Looking at the bid, we can see that it is a little bit higher, but this campaign is not profitable or scaling just because the bid is high. It's simply because this product requires a higher bid. The client found this information through the general testing campaign. So don't just go out and start putting the bids at a very high number just because this bid right here was 65 CAD and getting decent amount of sales. But looking at the actual products, we can see that it is profitable at a 3.21 ROAS, got in six sales so far, but this can become a little bit more profitable in my opinion if the bid is decreased because the selling price is only $70, so it's not that high, so the profit will be lower as well. But nonetheless, this campaign is working and that is exactly what you want to be looking at. Finally, looking at the last campaign, again, this campaign was not profitable at all. In fact, this client did end up shutting off this campaign right here, but it was running on maximized clicks at a 0.60 CAD bid. So as you can see, you always want to be testing like this client is doing. They did manual CPC with enhanced. They also tried maximize clicks for scaling. And clearly the result was that manual CPC with enhanced works better for this ad account for scaling. Now that is not always the case. You always want to be testing different things out to really know what is working for you. But that is pretty much it for this ad account and finally they have the company branded search campaign going on again i've made a video on this so i'm not really going to go over this but that was pretty much a general case study on how this ad account is able to scale consistently and with a 5x and above roas as you can see they're doing nothing special just doing the basic things which i teach and also looking at what is available in my google as master course just running generic general testing campaigns and smart shopping a com combination of two is really what is working right now plus scaling those products Products with three or more sales consistently is the way to go with manual CPC and enhanced CPC. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to what kind of products you have. As I was mentioning earlier, I do have a Google Ads marketing agency, which I currently run. If you want me to take care of your ads for you, run your Google Ads and achieve results like these, just go ahead and go on to my website at yourroommarketing.com and fill out the form and just book a call with me directly to see if we can work together. Otherwise, you do have my Google Ads Mastery course where you can learn to do this yourself. But that is pretty much it for the case study. If you find any type of value in this video, destroy the like button and destroy that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.